it's DHA's Reconnect with Rockers. I have a gentleman with me today. I'm so excited about this. Not only is he in a brilliant band, he's a best-selling author, he's a Grammy winner, he's a speaker, he's a father, he's a, what am I missing? He's a survivor. Am I, what am I missing, Brian? That is amazing. Survivor means the most because all the other, uh, all the other things you mentioned would probably collapse if, uh, if I didn't have that, you know? I am with Brian Head, Welsh from Corn. Um, wow, so I wanna start with the new record because that's what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about Requiem. I feel like this is Corn for me, perfected. It's like a perfect Corn record. Some people said, oh, they've reinvented themselves. I, they, didn't re, they, they didn't need to reinvent themselves. There was no reinvention for me here. It was just the perfect record from start to finish, I felt like every song was um, like a boom, like a quick hit, like a, like a great punch. Was it because you guys had a little extra time to breathe it in, to suck it in, to feel it, to not have to be like, get the record, go on press, go on tour, do this, do that, that, that I feel we got this perfect, perfect blend of what the band is all about? Well, I want to thank you for saying that, you know, first of all, and I really appreciate that. That's, you know, it means a lot to us and uh, we worked really hard on it. And the thing is, I think, I think the reason why it's, it's connecting so much is we got pissed off because we were in the middle or kind of at the beginning, actually, of our touring cycle with the nothing, the album before that. And it just got stopped you know, and it's tracks. We were on our second tour only. We didn't even get to go anywhere besides, you know, the summer in America and, and uh, you know, secondary markets. And then COVID hit and then we were just like, what now? So out of frustration, I think those songs came and, and it was, yes, the pandemic and the schedule, the schedules being totally open with nothing, you know, on the schedule at all, that helped. But um, yeah, I think it was just a, a lot of different things combined that gave us the outcome. So, but we're, we're very grateful. And I mean, it's everything we love about a corn record. It's got the darkness and it still has all of that. You know, I like to call it catchy corn, the catchy corn, <laughs> you know, because you catch it and you can't let go of it. And everything is an earworm. It's got that beautiful, incredible melody and something about Jonathan's voice on this record. For me, um, I just, I, I think it's over the top. It put me over the top as a fan. Right on. That's what I want to hear. So I think there, he's got a sweetness and a vulnerability, I think, to his voice on this record that wasn't on the last ones. You know, there's, there's different personalities of Jonathan Davis's voice, right? There's, you got, you got the, the weird, freaky Jonathan, you got the scatting Jonathan. No, you're right, you're right. And I think this record, there's, there was like a new rebirth of a different personality because you're right, you are so right. And in this one, maybe I heard something that I haven't heard before. Right. It's like, it's like this, the, the sweet Jonathan voice is more present on this record and less like spooky. And I love it. This, this new thing that he's doing, and he's done it before, but I really love it, you know, because uh, it just, the, I'm a melody guy. And when you have a beautiful melody with the, the, you know, a voice that sounds soothing, it just, it takes that melody to where it should be and was invented to be, you know. And I feel like if you get too freaky or do, you know, too, too out there stuff that it could, it can rob the song of the proper melody. And I think he bounced it just great. And I'm uh, very proud of him. And you know what else I think is perfection too? Uh, the sequencing of the record. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, because I think sometimes we don't realize how important sequencing in a record is. And I think it starts, I mean, when the journey starts with Forgotten, um, and it kind of takes us on that journey and then kind of wraps with Worst is on its way, which I think is uh, probably my favorite track on the record. I just love Me that too. track. Is Me it really? This um, yeah. Yeah. There we go, baby. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that it was just sequenced so perfectly 
Was that something that you guys were really conscious of or did it just kind of work out that way? Oh my gosh, we went back and forth with the sequencing because we are like you, we, we're album people, you know? We come from the decades that albums were special and I, even though it's getting less popular because of streaming, we still care very much about the sequence. And we, we went back and forth. There was a little bit of a um, frustration emails going back because it was one way and then it was like, oh, I don't know, I don't think so, you know? And, uh, and we finally landed on the one that everybody agreed on. And, you know, it wasn't like a huge, um, like a disagreement or nothing, but it was important to us. And I love the flow of it because you got the forgotten, which is just like a, you know, trippy track, heavy in your face. It goes pretty much the whole time. And, and then straight into a melodic song, you know, the worst is, uh, no, it's, it's, uh, let the dark do the rest, Yep. you know, and then to the first single, Start which is healing. a great yeah. flow. Yeah. Great flow. So uh, thank you for saying that. I totally agree with you. Yeah. And start the healing, by the way, another, another number one at rock radio for you guys. Oh my, we haven't had a number one since never, never the song wow. that when I first came in back into the band and I was kind of, it wasn't very guitar heavy that song. So, I wasn't jumping up and down that it was number one because it was like, it doesn't even sound like uh, <laughs> head and monkey thrashing on guitars. It sounds right. like an electronic song. And so to have this heavy track, number one is like full circle. I'm yeah. so blown away. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And congratulations. And that was a song I feel like people needed it, people heard it and they felt it and they the healing needed to start and then they wanted to get the aggression out and it just came at such a perfect time. I was on the Zoom when you guys actually introduced that song to radio and it just, it blew me away. So um, yeah, I, I'm not surprised that it went to number one. Wow, right on. That was a fun call, man, because yeah, we, we haven't done, I, I don't remember doing that a whole, I don't think, probably never, because with Zoom and the, and the pandemic and everything, it was really cool to do and you know, when we say we really appreciate you guys, we really do, you know, because you, you have kept, you've helped keep rock music alive and, and thriving for all these years. We talked about it before we started. So applause yeah, to you no, guys. We did, we, did a, we did have a nice little chat before we started because we just talked about, um, and you guys have been certainly, I talked about the station, gave you a little bit of a, a background because you do a lot of these with a lot of people and let you know a little bit of our almost 50 year history. Um, but you guys have been such a, uh, a leader in, you know, a sound, a movement, uh, a fan sound, keeping concerts, keeping live shows alive. When I, I look at those live, you know, first couple corn shows that I went to, and you guys are still, I mean, kicking it uh, better than ever. It seems like a great time for the band. You guys all seem like you're in an awesome place. And what I love is if there seems to be an obstacle, you guys kind of hop over it and turn it into an opportunity. Am I just thinking that the band is in a great place or, or is it a really, really good time for you? It really is a good time. You're, you're nailing it. Um, you can feel the energy, everything synchronizing really well. And uh, yeah, it's just, you know, everyone's done with the BS, with the, with the music industry. They're just like, if there's a hiccup and disagreement and there is problems, you know, we, everyone's been humbled enough to know that, you know, we're not going to end up like, you know, no judgment, but one of these like a queen drike or a rat and all this like ugliness. And we've had our share of lawsuits and stuff like that, but yes, we're going to, we're going to overcome them and we're not going to let them run corn into the ground, you know? It's too special. It's the, the, the fans are too important to us. Um, living our dream is still like very, we're just overflowing with gratefulness to do this all these years later. And, and now we have a number one in our like 27th year or whatever. And you have not been. lost any fans along the way. You've not, the fan base is always with corn, with corn. You know, I, I read comments, you know, on social media, as we all do. And I see people like discovered the band 30 years ago. They never disappoint, never thought I would still be going to see my favorite band 30 years later with my kids. 
a lot of bands can't wow. say that. I mean, that's a big freaking deal. So, you know, a band of the fans, yeah, you don't let that go just because somebody gets pissed off at somebody else. Right. Yeah. And man, I'm um, to hear that, like, I mean, you're brave. I don't read comments on social media. I, don't, I mean, <laughs> I don't read my own, but I read other people's. <laughs> right. There you go. And so that's, that's safer. And, but uh, no, I do sometimes. And it really is a, a crazy cool story because the Lord knows that <laughs> Corn has had our share, you know, with me leaving the band with the with David situation and Fieldy is on hiatus right now and yep. whatnot, but it, all positive vibes and Fieldy played on the record and we're, we're just going to overcome that too. And we're yeah, very you guys are like, listen, gonna, you know, he's taking some time. He's ready to come back. We're ready to have him back. You know, didn't want to, didn't want to get into it. That's his, you know, his own thing going on right now. And if he, if he comes back, um, the fans will be happy. And uh, if he doesn't come back, the fans will understand. I mean, people have been with you guys uh, throughout this journey. And, you know, I felt like I've known you, not just from being a Corn fan, but I have to bring this up because I thought if I ever speak to, to Head, I, I got to talk about Loud Crazy Love because I watched it. And when I watched it, then I watched it again. And I had watched it like again. It's like one of those things that I can just watch over and over and over. And let me tell you why. Really? I didn't go into it as a corn fan watching it. I didn't go into it as a parent. I'm not a parent. I'm a, I'm a pet parent, so I'm not a parent. Um, I just went into it saying, ah, I, I think this documentary is going to be pretty interesting. I probably will see some great corn footage. I didn't imagine learning so much about the human experience. And that's what I think you brought to it. Um, you were very brave. And for those of you who haven't seen it, I mean, I can't imagine, you know, corn fans are gonna be watching this, but it's not necessarily about being a corn fan or, or being a father. It's about um, wanting to get to the right place and the journey to get there. And not everybody's journey is the same. And your journey to get to this right place of being a great parent, of being somebody who was struggling and finding himself, um, I thought was so incredibly compelling that um, it, it just, it blew me away. Wow. Thank you so much, man. I, it was very painful to make that documentary and, and very, it was a combination of painful and, uh, and just, uh, you know, there's so much meaning in it for me and my daughter and showing the whole story of our lives and everything was, uh, it was scary. And, and also just, yeah, you know, like I said, very meaningful. And yeah, it's, it was, uh, I, I feel like the movie's about, you know, me finding the meaning of life, you know, and you think the meaning of life is one thing and, and then you go and do that. And then you find yourself in a hole like so many of us do. And so, you know, just finding humility, finding my faith, you know, um, finding a, a connection with Christ without the organized religious BS and watching my daughter overcome the suicidal uh, ideation and the self-harm and everything and just... I just want to give, I'll always give props to her. She was 14 or 15 when we filmed some of her counseling sessions in that movie. And she was like, yes. I told her, look it, you can choose. You say, no, we won't do it. But if we film you, you can say no later. It's your footage. I'm not forcing you to do this at all. And she was like, yes, I want to, I want to see if I can help some people while she was going through it. So She's a brave kid and yeah, very, yeah. very, yeah, we're very happy with the finished product and the Yeah, your daughter Janae is incredible. And it's a, it's a, it's a mission accomplished, you know, looking back at it now because you guys have a great relationship and she's a super amazing person. I've seen her be interviewed and I've watched you guys together, you know, in, in interviews that you did. And um, it's just beautiful to see how your relationship developed and the journey it took to get there you know some people think you have a beginning and then it, everything just ends up fine and people don't realize the steps that you have to take to end up in a place that you feel good right i mean suffering the, the one thing that i've learned is suffering whether it's self 
um, you know, what am I trying to say? If, if it's, if the suffering comes from self or if it comes from circumstances that are beyond our control, suffering has a purpose and it can be used to change us into, and have more wisdom and have, you know, just better understanding. And honestly, suffering makes a lot of people jaded, but most people, if they just let it do its thing, it makes you more humble. And as we grow older, you know, we become, we have more peace inside of our inner lives, you know, and that's what I've found. That's what I've learned. So yeah, it's a good thing. Yeah, it sucks yeah. when you're going through it. Yeah, but, yeah. It, yeah. Abs absolutely. And you and you were so selfless. And I don't even think you realized how selfless you were throughout that, which I think was a really, really compelling part um, of it as well. So uh, yeah, hats off to you and hats off to your beautiful daughter too. Um, for coming out right the on. other Did side. Did you like my parents in the movie? Your parents are so cute and they're so <laughs> sweet. And I loved how supportive they always were of you. Um, right. As, as a musician, and they were very proud of you, and um, they were just there to support. And I think that I loved, I loved watching the footage of them. Some of the time they were surprised, and they're like, I don't know where this came from or why this is happening, but they still stuck with it, and they always try to have an open mind and understanding which I thought was incredible. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool parents, man. My, yeah. my dad, my parent, my mom encouraged me playing guitar when I was 10 years old when I first started. Now, were you the a country fan? Did you like, was country music the first thing that you heard? I think I heard somewhere that it was like Buck Owens or like a country artist that you saw or you heard with guitar and you thought, you know what? I think I might want to do that. Yeah. No, it was Queen. Queen. Okay. Queen and then ACDC. It was those okay. two bands. Like Queen, Queen led to ACDC, and ACDC was the fire that lit me. Okay. Lit the passion for it. But I did have a country phase really quick. And Buck Owens is a part of our our hometown, and we actually lease Buck Owens' studio from his family now, and we've had it for like ten years. So wow. Wow. So there is a time. I knew to there that, was a Buccaneers kind of connection. But yeah, I, I did also read that Queen was an early, was, was it, uh, it was uh, one of the later records. Was it the game or something? And, and you heard something? Yep, that's yeah, that's it. It was the and, game. And um, got kind of sucked into that, sucked into that Brian May guitar, which, gosh, who, who doesn't? It was like, yeah, it got me just, it got, it was like the spark for music, that record. But the guitar passion and just being totally addicted to the guitar that started with angus young acdc yeah. and then went to randy rhodes with ozzy and and the, the iron maiden guys and kk downing and glenn tipton from priest wow. and yeah so yeah it was it was a cool thing but i just want to give props to my parents you know they they really encouraged me to play until ninth grade and i started growing my hair long my dad had an issue with the long hair <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I'm in guitar. I'm into guitar. You know, all these bands that I listen to, and even Bob Seger, he listened to you. Bob Seger had a little bit of long hair. He I did. Don't know. I think his friends. My dad told me his friends that he would drink with. They would, they would be like, "Why you let your son having that long hair, looking like a girl, <laughs> Phil?" <laughs> Oh man, I love it. I love it. It's been so awesome to catch up with you. My gosh, I feel like I've known you forever. I've had such a blast chatting with you and congratulations on just a dynamite record. And I was looking at the touring schedule. Um, dude, you are going to be one busy guy. Uh, you're, you're here, then you're, doing fe you're headlining, then you're doing festivals, then you're overseas. This is going to be a wild year. It is. And it's like, okay, you wanted to tour. The pandemic knocked you knocked you out of a touring <laughs> cycle. You wanted to tour. Okay, let's go tour. So we're we're stoked though. We're gonna hit it hard, and then we're gonna tour next year too, but probably a little bit slower. But this year, it's on. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like a Kiss concert. You wanted to tour. You got the tour. Right. The hardest working band. Good. <laughs> Brian, it has been such a pleasure to catch up with you. My gosh, I feel like you're an old friend. All the best. Uh, the record is a tour de force. It's a corn masterpiece. I just love it. And thanks for hanging out with me. It was such a, a fun time to talk to you. And I want to say. Look at take a night out, leave your twenty-two dogs, and bring, <laughs> bring your, bring your dude, and come to a corn concert and come say hi to us. Oh, I, I absolutely you. You've will. You've been in this game for me? so long. I want to hang. I would love to. I would love to. Thank you so much, my friend. All right. Take care. 
DHA's Reconnect with Rockers is powered by Karis Lock Company, your full-service locksmith, and Dover Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram on Route 46 in Rockaway.